up, Doe? What up, Doe? Detroit. What up, Doe? My Yeah, I Said It followers. It's your girl, Jaja. And you are tuning in, listening to Yeah, I Said It. And before I take it back, y'all already know what I'm going to do. I'm going to add more to it because ain't nobody got time to play no games with none of y'all. And you already know each and every Thursday, as I say, we ain't in nobody's hospital and we ain't in nobody's jail. And when I tell you they got room, okay, they got room and they will make room for all of us. Um, but if you're tuning in, listen, it's thankful Thursdays. We've got the activities of our limbs. We ain't in nobody's jail. We ain't in nobody's hospital. And I done been to all of those and ain't nobody got time. Um, but if you're tuning in, I want to talk to you guys today about stretching season. Stretching season. And I'm not talking about physically stretching. Um, I'm not just talking about physically stretching, but I'm talking about uh, stretching season. And um, if you if you know anything about toys from back in the day, you know, we had all those games, Monopoly. And, you know, we had these little artifacts that we would play with and these little figures. And one of the figures that I grew up on that my brothers grew up on that, you know, when you got a house full of kids, them toys be your toys and your toys be their toys. So my brother had this toy. It was called um, it was called the Stretch Armstrong. And it was a little Caucasian white man, white toy. And um, the premises of this toy was based off of a character on a show. And so Stretch Armstrong, we would pull Stretch Armstrong. I would have one in. My brother Big Boy had one in. My sister Tracy had one in. Uh, my, my, my brother Tony had another in. And we would stretch that Stretch Armstrong. And we would laugh at the fact that uh, we were able to stretch it that far, right? And sometimes in life, God will put things on us where we're feeling like we're being stretched, like we're being pulled in different directions. We feel like sometimes uh, we can't take the the limits or the um, the magnitude, right? That the things that we're going through, and so we feel pulled in different directions, and we we feel pulled mentally, and we feel pulled physically, and emotionally, and financially. But I want to tell you something. In your stretching season, this is going to show you what you really made of. See, around 2014, 2013, I, I had um, just got a divorce, right? In 2014. Then the next following year, in 2015, my mother passed away. Then the next following year, I got arrested and, and, and had to do probation and go to jail. Then the next year, my brother died. Then the next year, my, my, my aunt died. Then the next year, my grandma and both my grandmothers passed away. So boop, 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 right? Stretching, being stretched, being pulled. And see, sometimes we don't know uh, the capacity of where God is taking us based off of things that we prayed for in the past, right? See, a lot of us forget about the things that we prayed for in the past because you right now you focused on what's happening right now. You know, they got our, our, our um, fear levels up um, and our belief levels low. And if you're tuning in, you're listening to, yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. I'm talking all about uh, your stretching season. We're in a season where um, our fear levels are up, but our faith levels are low. And I even have to check myself sometimes because I know the God that I serve has literally pulled me, literally pulled me. OK, and I mean, sometimes I wasn't willing to go uh, willingly, but sometimes God has pulled me through situations um, that I did not see a way out of or a way through. And sometimes it can be disheartening. Uh, sometimes it can be frustrating because in your stretching season, you don't know what you're capable of. When I was going through those different things of, uh, of marriage and divorce and turning around and losing my mom and then turning around and going to rehab and then turning around and I'm, I'm literally singing in the choir with a with an ankle bracelet on. So so I know I know for a fact um, what God is capable of doing in your stretching season. But you also have to have a stretch in your faith. See, for me, when I know I'm in a space where um, I don't want my negative energy to be transferred, I withdraw myself. Because I'm I'm a happy person. I'm a joyous person and I'm a blessing to be around. But when I'm in a season in a space of trying to uh, figure it out and 
believe and have faith in God that he's going to work things out on my behalf, sometimes I withdraw. And so you have to understand that in this season, what you're truly made out of, because a lot of us pray for things. And then when God blesses us with them, are we capable of handling them? A lot of us want to be millionaires, thousandaires. A lot of us want to have uh, uh, be on the Forbes list. But if those things were to happen right now, today, somebody say, I want you to cater for a thousand people. Are you ready? If somebody say, hey, I want you to design Lady Gaga. Are you ready? If somebody was to say, hey, Jaja, I need you to host uh, uh, Little Caesars Arena. You know I'm ready. Let's go. Somebody wants to say, hey, y'all, I want you to go and host Ford Field. I'm already prepared. If somebody wants to say, hey, I need you to host at TCF, I done already did it, so I'm already prepared. See, at the end of the day, there are some things that we plan for, that we ask God for, that sometimes we're not ready. And that's why in this stretching season, God is going to prepare you for some things that your heart has had a desire for a long time ago. See, there's some things that I, I forgot that I even prayed about. Um, there are some there are some positions that God has have afforded me to be in that I had, didn't even think about anymore. Because as you matriculate in life, you forget about, OK, I, I, I used to pray God just help me get some gas. Now I'm at a season of making sure my gas tank stay filled up. I used to pray, Lord, just let us have enough. Now I'm at a place where I'm, I can give some things away. See, when you get to a place of stretching season, you see what you're made of. And see, one of the things that a lot of people don't understand in the stretching season is you got to stick to the plan. See, a lot of us sway from the plan when things don't look like we envisioned them. When the marriage doesn't turn out to be the ideal person that you thought that they were going to be because in your mind you said, Oh, um, you know, we're going to, we're going to travel the world and we're going to do this. And when one person got sick or uh, another person decided they wanted to change and switch plans. Now that ain't the ideal relationship that you once thought it was. And see, a lot of times we don't stick to the plan because the plan has changed. There are a lot of things, um, in 2021, last year that I had anticipated that uh, a lot of people switched up on me when it came to a lot of different plans. And um, when people switch up on you, it causes anxiety and stress because now you have to maneuver that plan and make those adjustments. Um, and it adds on extra stress. It adds on, um, it adds on frustrations that you didn't initially have. And see, as you continue to matriculate through life and through your career, you are going to be stretched, um, not only in, in, in your spirit and in your soul, but you're going to be stretched in your thinking. Okay, Susie Q can't come to work. So now I got to figure out how I can train my staff and get my staff in position because now we're missing one person. Or um, a check didn't fall through or a check didn't clear in time. So now I got to figure out, OK, how am I going to pay uh, this invoice or how am I going to cover this particular situation? And so now you become you become mentally stretched. You become stretched. And see, in this season last year, we were tested Oh, we were tried and tested. Baby, I thank God because I'm telling you, I almost caught a case and I ain't nobody got time for that. Because as much as I love everybody, I don't want to be locked up and I don't want to be sitting in no uniform that's starchy and I like being free. So I have to understand certain situations in my stretching season. It had to let me know, oh, you you want to be on TV. So you got to be prepared for people to criticize you. You got to be prepared for the lies. You got to be prepared. Even, even, even if it ain't true, you got to be prepared for what's to come. And so God will put you in certain situations to say, oh, this is what you want. OK, well, let me prepare you for what those people who are already in those positions got to go through. See, a lot of us, we want the fame and we want the fortune and we want the money, but we don't want the negatives that come out of those positives. See. Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks, W.E.B. Du Bois, uh, John Conyers, uh, uh, all of these people were leaders in, within our community. And yeah, they did some magnificent, amazing, trailblazing things, but it came with some negative concepts and some, and some negative outcomes. And see, at the end of the day, 
a lot of us don't want to deal with the negatives of life. You can't, you cannot live life and just only think that only positives are going to happen. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're tuning in, you're listening to you yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. We're talking all about stretching season. Don't get me wrong. There are, there's a life that God wants you to live that is of abundance, that is of positive. But you also got to understand that living that abundant life also comes with some negative outcomes. Because even with you living that abundant life, there are going to be some negative attitudes around you that won't be as happy for your growth or your transition. You may have quit smoking cigarettes and all your buddies are cigarette and car playing buddies. Now you got to make the adjustment. Now they think you better than them because now you don't smoke Newport 100s in a box no more and, and you want to come over. Now you just want to play cars. And, and now because they have a negative perception of you, now you have to readjust your success in overcoming smoking cigarettes. See, everybody won't be happy for your growth. Everybody won't be happy for the transitions that you're making or the boundaries, right, that we end up setting up in our lives. It makes other people uncomfortable, right? And it also makes us uncomfortable. Truth be told, when you start setting up boundaries, you start looking at yourself like, okay, self, self is doing her thing. Self is doing his thing. Self is paying bills on time. Self is, is making adult decisions. Self is making great parenting decisions. See, you start, when you start stretching yourself, you start seeing yourself in a way that you didn't see yourself before. Because, see, there are a lot of people with a lot of mouth, but not a lot of backbone. A lot of mouth, but a lot, not a lot of courage. See, there's a difference between putting your money where your mouth is. And it's a whole ball game, a different ball game when it comes to actually spending that money where your mouth is. See, we can put our money where our mouth is, but we're going to spend it. See, a lot of people show up with the money. But do you invest the money in the community? A lot of us show up with the great grand speeches that are heartfelt. But are you going to dig in the dirt and get in that soil and get dirty right along with the rest of the people? See, it's a whole different ball game when you can show up and sign up for the petition. But when you got to stand there when everybody's back is against you and you still got to stand on what you believe in. See, some of y'all get real, real wishy-washy and feeble-minded when it comes to standing your ground. See, Florida know how to stand their ground. That's how we was able to lose Trayvon Martin got arrested. So you know why? Because there are people, there are ethnicities, and there are cultures who stand on what they believe in. And they ain't thinking about your black behind or my black behind. They don't care about uh, uh, none of what you're talking about. Because at the end of the day, they want to protect theirs. How quick are we to protect ours? They, they will protect their own. How quick are we to protect ours? How quick are we to protect what we built? How quick are we to protect what we're building? How quick are we to protect other people who are building things? But see, this is the thing. A lot of us want the blessings without showing up. You got to show up for the blessings. There are things that my son is going to get based off default because I showed up. I showed up for the struggle. I showed up for the hard times. I showed up when it wasn't convenient. I showed up when I didn't have it. I showed up when I did. And see, when you do things in seasons where you don't think it's going to benefit, you have just planted a seed. And that tree may not come into full fruition right before your eyes immediately, but over time. Over time, there were times when I was a 17 year old mother that I did not foresee how we were going to make it. And my son is 18. He'll be 19 this year. College student. If he decide he don't want to go there no more. If he decide he want to get a job. If he decide whatever it is he want to do. Guess what? We made it. We made it past the elementary school phase. We made it past the middle school blues. We made it through the high school woes. And now we sitting up here, we, we in adulthood. And now that's a different transition. And when you're in a different transition and you show up for those blessings, God will honor those seeds that you made. There are blessings that I receive, not because uh, I'm so such and much and, and I think I'm all that. 
I get blessings based off what my mama did, how my mama treated people, the seeds that my mother planted. And so those seeds that my mother planted, all I get to do is water that so that it keeps growing. And so from whatever that my mother's planted seeds for, and as I watered it, God will allow those things to keep growing, but you got to keep toiling with those seeds. You got to keep getting in that dirt. You got to keep doing that work because I'm going to tell you something in that stretching season, it's going to always, it's going to sometimes feel like things are not going to always um, have a return on your in investment immediately because you don't see the instant gratification. See, a lot of us compare our hard work to people who are scamming. See, you can't compare 10 years of working to a PPP come up. You can't compare uh, hard work and muscles and going to the gym to somebody who went and got a nip tuck and it ain't no shade. Do what you got to do, right? I ain't hating on your hustle. Do what you got to do. But when you start comparing your hard work to people who did things easy, the easy way, you can sometimes feel, um, get hard on yourself and feel bad because you don't see the growth. But I'm going to tell you something. You go back and you look at the photo album, not the social media. Go back and look at the, the tangible pictures, the ones we got in, 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 in photo frames, the ones we, we got in that box tucked away, because that'll show you the growth. That 10 year challenge, that ain't nothing. Take it back a little bit more. Take it back to a 15 year challenge. Take it back to a 20 year challenge. Matter of fact, take it back to a two year challenge. Take it back to a three-year challenge. You ain't even the same person that you were in 2021 that you are in 2022. And see, a lot of people aren't going to accept that season because guess what? The mindset changes. And when the mindset changes, the actions change behind it. See, I don't believe in nothing nobody said. Okay? People can tell you they love you today and hate you tomorrow. They did it to Jesus. So I know they can do it to him. They can do it to me. I know that they can do it to the celebrities, the athletes, uh, the people that we deem to look up to. One minute they'll be with you and a whole nother breath they'll be against you. So I, I don't pay attention to what people say. I pay attention to people and how they move, right? People will say, yeah, let's do something. Let's work together. <clears throat> let's get something going. Woo, 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 blah, blah, blah. And then they'll turn around. And the very thing that they plan with you, they'll go and do it with somebody else. I just was looking and, and, and so at a young lady that I thought deemed very highly of, only for her to, my show is called Uncommon Conversations. She turned around and named her show Candy Conversations. Now, why would you go and do that? Yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. We're not doing that. We're not doing that in this season. Let God stretch you so that you can figure out what God has for you. See, a lot of us do a, a cut, copy, and paste in Detroit. There aren't a lot of originals. And it's unfortunate because God has given each and every one of us a gift and an idea. And there is so much. There is so much. There are so many areas where people can tap in and make just as much money, have just as much clout, have just as much notoriety, but we don't want those things because we see what's working for these people. We see uh, the outcome that's happening for these people. So we think, oh, let me do what they're doing. That's not how that should go. Because when you understand your mindset, when you understand the actions that you need to make, in order to live that life that you say you want to live, you're going to have to change some of your movements and you're going to have to change the way you think towards yourself and what you believe that you're capable of doing. This is why if you tune in and you're listening to Yah, I said it before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. Listen, make sure you follow me on Facebook, subscribe to my YouTube channel. You know, Jaja, because you do stop acting brand new, stop acting fake. Listen, I should have just as many followers on my Instagram and my Facebook as I do on my YouTube channel. Okay? Yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. Put it in the search bar. Zsa I'm going to come right on up because I'm probably the only Zsa you know. And if you do know some other Zsa's and ain't they real name, it's their nickname. Yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it because you know how people do. They like to make nicknames and la 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 ca ca. This is my government. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about the stretching season. Because I'm going to tell you something. Your attitude equals your altitude. 
Your attitude equals your altitude. And it's easy to have these little cliche sayings, but they are applicable to your life. See, a person with good energy, good vibrations, good attitudes, people want to be around. People, people are drawn to my energy. I don't even say too much. But hey, y'all, how y'all doing? They like, oh my God, okay. I've changed the temperament and the direction of the room. You know when you go in a room and you know when people are feeling you and when they ain't feeling you, you sense it. You sense it like a sensei. You sense it. You, you, know, you know when people are, 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 are blowing smoke up your behind and when they really feeling you. You, you know when somebody really listening to your ideas and, and really following the storyline and the conversation opposed to when somebody giving you a, uh-huh, yeah, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. You'd be like, are you listening? Right? Because, because at the end of the day, this is a, this is a season where you're going to be stretched in so many different capacities because of what you prayed for in the past. This is why you got to be careful of a what you say and what you pray for. And you also have to be careful of what you say about other people because also in your stretching season, God can be stretching you about your mouth and you saying stuff about people that you shouldn't be saying. See, there are people who had um comments about me and my family's uh, discourse in our situations who had no idea about what was going on, but they had a lot to say and a lot of uh, uh, comments about partial truths. And so you got to be careful about what you say about people when you have partial information. See, a lot of us like to run and have diarrhea mouth off partial truths, but we'll run with the lies. See, I'm a big believer and asking follow-up questions. I, I guess that's the media in me. That's that's the journalism in me. That's that's the that's the media in me. That's the that's the production in me. There there's some other parts to this story that's missing. Like, how did you get from just blowing her junk out? Like there there was something that happened before that. Like, where where did the part come from? When I look at certain stories on the news and I see little kids dying and people getting kidnapped and little girls missing, like, there, there were parts. There were parts before that. And see, people don't want to tell the parts. The daughter ran away because the mama and, and the daddy or the mama and the boyfriend got into it or, or they have it certain situations and, and the father is or the stepdaddy or the boyfriend putting their hands on the, on the child and the child says enough is enough. I already got to deal with being here for virtual. I just would rather run away. And so then here we go. We got now the mama or daddy on the news. Oh, my baby done ran away and this, that, and the third. But you ain't told the, the whole truth. You, you ain't saying, oh, I'm a drug addict and my kid went to go get some food and they trying to figure it out. See, we'll tell things that make us seem like the victim and, and, and other people, the villain or the situation is, is, is a villain or villainize a certain situation for it to benefit us. This is why you got to, in this season, you got to ask more questions. You got to either ask more questions or you got to ignore it all together because if it ain't got nothing to do with you, it shouldn't have nothing to do with you. If it ain't got nothing to do with you, it shouldn't have nothing to do with you. Because, see, a lot of us insert ourselves in situations that ain't got nothing to do with us. You in somebody else's Kool-Aid. You worried about somebody else's business. And, see, this is how we get messed up in our communities because we ain't focused on our focus. We should be focused on black entrepreneurship. We should be focused on black health. We should be focused on black families. We should be focused on, on ed educating our youth and our children and educating our families. We should be focused on policy and understanding how the justice system and the, and the legislative system affects our lives. We should be focused on making sure we got clean water systems, uh, making sure that people aren't, aren't taking advantage of our people. There are things that we need to focus on, but we ain't focused on that. And see, this is why we get lost in the sauce because we end up making things more difficult than what they have to be. Let me tell you something. I'm big on the cutoff game, but I'm also big on making sure I'm cutting off the right people. See, 
I cut off people who make me feel a negative way. I'm not cutting off people who I've had a disagreement with. Some of y'all need to grow up, okay? You can't handle a, a, a little bit of critiquing or a little bit of uh, disagreement. We ain't gonna always agree. God has made us all different. We all have our own opinion about different things because of life's circumstances that have happened to us. And so because everybody has had different livelihoods and everybody has had different outcomes on their lives, your mindset is gonna be different. But as you mature and you grow older, that doesn't mean that a person who's older is more mature. Some of you are stuck at, as your 12 year old self. Some of you are stuck at your 20 year old self. Some of you are stuck at your five year old self. Whatever happened to you in your life that was traumatic or dramatic or left a, a, an imprint on you, whether it was good or bad, or that particular time frame in your life that made you feel your best, you are stuck there. And it's hard to, to grow in life when you get stuck. See, for a long time, I was stuck as my 17 year old self who got pregnant in her senior year of high school. And I couldn't get past that 17 year old girl because I was just constantly trying to make up for that mistake that one decision that changed the trajectory of my life. So because I got stuck there, all of my decisions was based on that 17 year old girl that was stuck with that decision. I was, I was always trying to get out of, out of that mistake and prove to people that I wasn't that, that 17 year old that was making that mistake. See, this is where maturity comes in. You gotta learn to not only forgive others, but you gotta forgive yourself for the bad decisions you made, for the wrong turns and the wrong moves you made. See, the minute that you start forgiving yourself, you quick to be able to forgive others. See, I'm okay with giving people grace and mercy and extending that from afar. We ain't gotta be friends, we ain't gotta talk no more. Your grace and your mercy has been extended. Listen, I ain't gonna set you on fire if I see you, but I'm, I'm darn sure not gonna turn around and be like, you need some help, I'm gonna keep it moving. Because at the end of the day, if you let a snake bite you once, that's on you. But you let a snake bite you twice, listen, shame on them, but shame on you. This is why you got to understand in this season, growing up, being mature, handling certain situations is a mission. That's a mission. Because as you matriculate and God blesses you in certain seasons, as you get stretched, as you, as you grow, as you get more, God will give you more. Too much is given, much is required. There's going to be a, a part of you that you don't even know that's required. There was a part of me that I needed to mature and even in, in order to even handle my young adult son. The 17-year-old, the 18-year-old mindset, motherhood that I walked into can't be the same one that I have in my 30s. Can't be the same one that my son is walking into, into his young adulthood. I got to see things at a different angle. And when you start to look at things at a different angle and a different perception, you see the bigger picture. Nobody has to coerce you or persuade you to understand what's happening. This is why when I look at some people, and if you're tuning in, you're listening to, yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. That's why when I look at certain people, and I look at certain situations and I think to myself, we had ancestors who had courage with no resources, but we have resources with no courage. And it's disheartening and it's disappointing because we could be so far and further as families, as a people, as a community, as a city, but we choose to have courage in the wrong areas. We choose to act tough and, and bout it, bout it in the wrong areas other than fighting for the stuff that we should be fighting for. See, when you learn to grow and mature, words mean nothing. Changes do. There are people who are going to get up throughout this year from city council members to state legislators to local governments to county governments to national governments that are going to come and give you their two piece in a biscuit speech. 
Now from that speech, you want to see, do your words match your actions? And if their words don't match their actions, then you don't need to be supporting those particular individuals. It's the same thing with relationships. If a man say, oh, baby, I'm not going to do something no more. I want to change my ways. And you take him back or you take her back and those ways are not changed. Guess what? You need to exit stage left because you came back because of what they said. You want to stay because of what they did. See, there are some relationships I don't want back because your words didn't match your actions. You can't say you love me and to sit around and, and have a whole negative conversation or be in a room while somebody talking bad about me. That's why you got to be mindful of the people you have in your circle, the people you call family, the people you call friends, because there is no way possible that a person can say that they love you or they're your friend or they're your family or they got your back or they support you and, it, and they don't show that. See, it's easy to say that, but it's a whole different ball game to actually do that. And see, this is, I'm in a season where support is free. Putting somebody on is free. Now, you can't put everybody on, and you can't put everybody in a position because sometimes people will disappoint you, and, and now you've messed up their name and their relationship. That's why I'm always very cautious of who I partner with. And I'm always cautious of who I put on because everybody won't have um, a positive outcome and be able to say, you know, I, I went in and I did what I said I was going to do. There are some people who you put on and they go in and they mess everything up. And now they, the, your people looking at you like, I thought you sent me somebody loyal, reliable. I thought you sent me somebody that was a woman or man about their word. I, I thought you sent me somebody that I could trust and I could depend on. And then when you go in there with your shiesty, shady stuff on your own agenda, now you done messed up the whole, you done messed up the whole, whole plan, the whole play. This is why, like I said earlier, you got to stick to the plan. You got to stick to the play because at the end of the day, Real support is free. Sharing somebody's stuff, that's free. Showing up if you can, that's free. Telling somebody about the event or, or about the situation, free. Free 99. But what that tells me is, do you really want to put people on? Do you really want to help people? Like you say you do? And if you're tuning in, listening to you, yeah, I said it before I take it back. I'm going to add more to it. Listen, if you're tuning in, we are having our first Fridays, um, February the 4th. Make sure you mark your calendars. Listen, it's for the grown and sexy, mature crowd only. Don't come in here with no riffraff because you will get put out. We're taking positive attitudes and negative COVID tests. Listen, our first Friday event was off the chain. And, and next month for Black History Month, we got a whole, uh, a whole slew of events from February 1st to the 28th, because at the end of the day, nobody's going to teach us about our history but ourselves. They took black history out of black schools. Where they do that at? And we let it happen. Nobody's in an uproar that they can teach us white history. Stuff we, we everybody knows that is lies, even the white people that's teaching it, that created it, they even know it's lies. But the actual black history that we have about our own people is true. And, they, and we allowed them to take it out of the school. We allowed, we allowed them to take it out of the church. We allowed them to take prayer out of, out of situations that was meant to help us. Because we become complacent and, and we lack courage in areas where we need to be courageous. That's something that we should be fighting for. Our babies deserve to know where they come from, that our history did not start with us being enslaved and kidnapped. But at the end of the day, if that's all they seen and if that's all they know, guess what? That's what they're going to go with. And at the end of the day, we live in a world where it's now lights, camera, action. Can't do nothing without being filmed, recorded. Can't be nowhere without somebody taking your picture or, or you being uh, in a situation where people zooming in on your stuff. Uh, we just had a situation where Marielle Lou, her wig was back here. 
Sis, I know, been there, done that. And at the end of the day, you just going to have to be a little bit more conscientious uh, of your unit. You, you just going to have to be a little bit more conscientious of your unit. Because at the end of the day, a lot of us are putting our attentions into things that, that, that don't make no sense. We literally put more focus and Mario lose wig sliding back than we did our first few city council meetings that have actually been an uproar. It's been a sugar honey iced tea show already. And we only two weeks in. So what that tells me is, is that our focus is off. We are paying attention to the wrong things. If you know more about somebody else's family than you do your own, your priorities are off. If you are easily offended by somebody saying something to you, your priorities are off. If you're not focused on checking your feelings and checking uh, where you need to place them, your priorities are off. When you start ignoring things that you know you should not be ignoring, your priorities are off. If your children are lacking in areas where you know they need help, but you, you are dependent upon the education system and the teachers to teach your babies things that you should be teaching them, your priorities are off. If you're anticipating or expecting the nursing homes and the hospitals to take care of your loved ones and to make sure that their health is up to par and to make sure your health is up to par, your priorities are off. If you're focused on somebody else's success and not focused on the hard work and the journey that you need to be on, guess what? Your priorities are off. If you focus more on the lies and the fears that the media is causing you to have and, and you questioning your own family and, and every time somebody cough or sneeze or blink, now you worried about if it's COVID or if you're going to catch it or if you're going to die. If your life is in order, you could die today and not even fear because guess what? You know the Lord. You saved. At the end of the day, you did what you could do for the people you say you love because at the end of the day, we all going to die. We just don't know when. The Bible says you don't know the day, the time, or the hour. So why would I be concerned about what you got going on when God has given me time right now to focus on what I need to focus on? Some of our focus is off. You focused on who doing what with who, who ain't doing what with who, who. You focus on the wrong thing. And this is how people are able to go right past you when it comes to success. You know why? Because they stayed their head down to the books and they stayed their head down to the focus and they stayed their head down to whatever it is that they're trying to build. A lot of people didn't see me coming. You know why? Because they had already underestimated me. They had already little dogged me. They had already undervalued what I had brought to the table. So when they saw me coming, it was like, oh, snap. I, did, I didn't know she was doing this. Oh, I didn't know she was coming with a billboard. Oh, I didn't know she was coming with this. Oh, I didn't know. No, you don't. Because you don't know what people is working on and focused on. And while you focused on hating on them, they over here hustling. They over here making moves. They over here on a mission. They over here following through the vision that God gave them. While you over there talking about what you could talk about. You, yeah, okay, so since y'all want to talk, talk about that, cool. Y'all continue to talk about that. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to talk to this billionaire about investing and what I got going on. Y'all keep talking about that. Go ahead. I give you permission. You waste your time with that. Because a lot of us end up wasting time that we cannot get back. There are parents who decided that they didn't want to be fathers to their children and mothers to their children. And now their children gone and grown and gone. And now it's like, oh, snap. Yeah, what did you think? They was going to be little kids forever. This is one of the reasons why we got to pay attention to what God has given you to do, what he's given your hands to do. Because the minute that you start focusing in on what other people are doing, you get distracted about your focus. There are days that I'm dead be tired and I don't got the strength. I don't have the time or the patience. But God said, did you say this what you wanted? This is what this entails. This is what it takes. I'm pretty sure Michael Jordan was tired every time he came to the gym. 
I'm sure he was physically and mentally wore out. I'm sure every time Serena stepped on that tennis court, she was tired after having to play this game since she was a kid. I'm sure every time Oprah Winfrey didn't feel like getting in front of that camera. I'm sure every time Jamie Foxx didn't feel like singing that song. I'm sure every time Marshall Thurgood didn't feel like uh, uh, giving a speech. I'm sure I'm sure the Black Panthers were scared out of their mind every time they wanted to have a meeting. But guess what? When the vision and the duty calls, you answer. There are, there are blessings in what you're building. But if you're tuning in, you're listening to yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. I'm talking all about this is stretching season. And just like that toy, Stretch Armstrong, you're going to be stretched. You're going to be stretched in areas. Right now, my finances are being stretched. I'm, I'm trying to make something happen with a little bit of something and a little bit of something. My money acting funny and my change is acting strange. But guess what? I ain't going to turn my back on my money and my money ain't going to turn its back on me. We are in this thing together, okay? We are in a relationship, okay? Me and my finances are in a, uh, we are in a whole marriage and a love affair, okay? And at the end of the day, we're going to make each other happy. We're going to bring joy to each other. I don't love money. I don't love money where I will betray you. I love what money can do for my lifestyle so that I can help you. See, a lot of y'all love money so much that you'll betray your own family for a few dollars. But then when it comes to actually standing up for your family, you don't have a backbone and the courage to do that. We'll fight each other over a few hundred dollars, but we won't, we won't work together to make the millions. We'll fight each other over the $20, over the $100, over the $600. Well, oh, we'll tear each other name down. For, for $175, $150, but we won't come together to make $150,000. So you don't want to hear that. You'll, you'll, you'll fight me, try to tarnish my name for a couple dollars, but you won't work with me to make a million. Ain't that something? But the Asians do it. Africans do it. White folks do it all day long. They don't care for each other, but they care enough about what they're trying to build. And see, at the end of the day, our culture, who I say? Us. People that look like you and me. We tend to focus on things that won't help our focus. Because it's a matter of your belief system. And I was talking to one of my business partners and it feels good to work with people that you can trust. Black people are so disloyal at times because we are so, we are, we have learned scarcity and we've learned to hold on to things because we don't feel like we would ever get them again. And so because we feel like we'll never get them again, we will we will literally turn our backs on people that we shouldn't even be turning our backs on. And it's disheartening because when you start underestimating people, that's when they do the craziest stuff to you. You don't anticipate nobody to, to do nothing to try to hurt you. And so when they do something to try to hurt you, you like, dang. I never believed that you would try to do something like that. I never believed that we couldn't get past this point. I didn't, I never believed that, that you would hold this, this particular grudge, or I never thought that you would be this shysty, or I never thought that you would be this backbiting and, and, and have this much portrayal. It, there are some things that you, you never underestimate a person, but this is a, a season of stretching you for you to understand. Don't underestimate nobody. Because what one person will do today, what will be something they won't do tomorrow. This is why you got to understand every smile ain't a friend. Every clap ain't your homeboy, your homegirl. See, this is why when I look at certain people and I look at certain situations, I zero in and focus on what they do not what they say, 
Because when you start listening to their words and you start getting caught up in the ooh and the eye and the things that they're doing and saying to make you feel good, this is how women get their they hearts broken. Because that man is sweet talk, your panties off. And now you, you, you done gave up the cooch. Now you feeling stupid. Now, now you feeling dumb because he didn't, he didn't, he didn't say things, right? That tickled your fancy and made you feel some type of way. Same thing with us, fell, with you fellas. She didn't say all them sweet nothings. She didn't slobbed on your knob like corn on a cob. And now you broke and you ain't got no money because she didn't swindle you out of all your dollars. And now you want to call her a gold digger. And now you mad at every woman that you come across because she didn't whisper sweet nothings and let you, you didn't let your guard down. This ain't the season of letting your guard down. This is the season of paying attention to what people do. One of my relatives called me yesterday. Hey, I was just calling to, to, to see how y'all was doing. And yeah, I just wanted to tell, you know, uh, you and your sister, you know, congratulations on a new restaurant. Uh, let me know how I can help. Here, take these flyers to your job and pass them out. You, you want to help? Here you go. So now when we give you these flyers, we're going to see what you do after that. Let's, let, I don't want to hear what you're talking about. Thank you for the congratulations. Uh, keep it moving. Here go these flyers. What you doing with them? Let's let's see. Let's put your money where your mouth is. Because see, there are a lot of people that are going to tell you a lot of things in this season, and you got to be prepared for if those things don't come through. This is why you end up being stretched. This is why God has you trying to solve certain problems that you weren't even you weren't even a this wasn't even a problem for you. Now. Here comes a problem that you didn't even anticipate having. It's like you let somebody drive your car all day and here they come back with your car on E. How you got my car on E? And you know I got somewhere I got to be. You were supposed to have gas in my car. Now I got a problem that I didn't have before I let you have my car. Because when I gave you my car, I had gas, right? Now I'm getting my car back. Now I got to go to the gas station. Now I got to go pump the gas. Now I got to make stops that I didn't anticipate making today because that wasn't a part of my plan. This is why you got to pay attention to what people do, not what they say. And you can't get caught up in every smile and, and every can clap and every congratulations and every you go girl and, and, and every, you know, I'm so proud of you. I hear all of those things and I digest them and I'm grateful that people end up paying attention to what you're doing and how you're moving, but you keep moving. Don't get caught up in the accolades and the congratulations because people get caught up in those and they get complacent and they get stagnant. And at the end of the day, if you are, if you're moving based on accolades, you're going to get disappointed because there are going to be, there are going to be seasons in your life where those accolades turn into critiques and criticism. And it don't always feel good. And it don't always digest the same way that, that mashed potatoes digest. And see, this is one of the things that I learned in my stretching season. I had to upgrade my faith. I had to upgrade my belief system. I started off with a mustard seed of faith. I shouldn't be a mustard seed faith no more. Because if, if I know what God has done for me, and if I know the seasons and situations that I've overcome, and I also know the season that I'm in right now, my, my, my faith level sh should be on skyrocket, right? But see, certain situations in life have us questioning our faith. They have us questioning our, our belief system. How can you say, because we will, we, y'all know how black people are. We will quote some scriptures, but do we believe it? One of my favorite scriptures is God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power of love and a sound mind. If God has not given me a spirit of fear, that means he ain't given me a spirit of fear to fear nothing and no one. Not no COVID, not no, not no uh, poverty, not no uh, hater, not no enemy, not, not none of those things. If God didn't give you a spirit of fear, then who did? Who put fear in you? If God didn't give you the fear, if God did not give you a spirit of fear, then who gave it to you? If you are walking in fear, 
for anything in your life, whether it's to start a business, uh, uh, promoting or launching. If you are operating in fear, then you are operating in Satan's plan. If God didn't give you the spirit of fear, but of power of love and a sound mind, then who gave you the spirit of fear? I walk in every room with my head held high and my shoulders back. That don't mean that I'm a little scared, you know what I'm saying, a little nervous, you know what I'm saying, because I'm around and I'm in a new situation, I'm in a new environment, but I'm still going to be me because God has not given me the spirit of fear. And if this is supposed to work out for me, guess what? It's going to work out for me. And this is why you got to know in this stretching season, if you're tuning in, you're listening to, yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. And I know you heard me the first time. Listen, we are approaching uh, my wedding season, uh, Valentine's Day. Listen, if you're newly engaged, you got engaged over the holiday. If you're looking for a wedding officiant, if you know somebody that's getting married and they need a wedding officiant, listen, don't hesitate to book your appointment right now. Uh, we are booking appointments to fill up uh, for the months of February, March, April, and May. And listen, that, that um, February... 22nd, 22 date. Listen, that date is filling up fast. So if you want to get married on 2 22 listen, you better tap in right now so that you can book your appointment um, and book your wedding ceremony. And listen, I'm gratefully uh, uh, appreciative, grateful and appreciative to those of you who share my videos, um, who share my posts, because at the end of the day, it's a blessing when you have people who are in higher places than you so that when you get to a place of need, you can say, hey, hey, Ja, I, I, I know you over here in that area. You know anybody that can whoop, whoop, whoop? And see, for me, I remember people who support me. I remember people who, who put me in positions when I couldn't help myself or put me in a position. Now, for those individuals who decided that they wanted to uh, be double-minded and unstable in all their ways, I had to cut ties. Because you're not about to sit up here and play with my emotions. And that's another thing in your stretching season. You don't have time for people in your life that want to play with your emotions. One minute y'all cool. The next minute y'all enemies. One minute y'all here. The next minute y'all there. You need consistency in your life. You need people who are going to be the same all the time. It doesn't mean that they're not growing. It doesn't mean that they're not changing, but at least you know that they're going to be consistent. Now, that don't mean that they don't have off days. And I don't mean that they don't have certain situations happen in their lives because we also have to understand, don't get in your own way. And a lot of us get in our own way because we're dealing with our own things and our own situations. And I've been there. I've gotten in my own way. I've self-sabotaged situations because I was dealing with an emotional jaja. And sometimes when you're dealing with those emotions and you're not putting those emotions in check, sometimes those emotions will make a fool out of you. I've been in situations where my emotions made a fool out of me. And I had to understand and go back to the drawing board and figure out, okay, what happened? What, what happened in this scenario that changed the trajectory of this whole situation. Okay. 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 So you got to do those check and balances in this stretching season and not only upgrading your belief system, but you're not faking it till you making it no more. You just going to make it and you're going to walk into it. I don't fake nothing. If I got it, I got it. If I don't, I don't. And if I'm able, I'm able. And if I'm not, I'm not. We have a, a stigma within our communities, you know, where we got to have the chain and the cardies and we got to have the whole shebang to make it seem as if we live in our best lives like it's golden. But then people know you in real life and they know your real situations. And so it's really hard to perpetrate the fraud with people who really know about you. This is why I am... I am wholeheartedly focused on being consistent when it comes to growth, when it comes to what it is that I'm building, because you don't want to look up and people pull your card and say, I thought you was this and now you that. Or you used to be this and now you're not that no more. Because people will have you looking crazy 
and you will have you looking crazy trying to keep up with the Joneses, trying to make it seem like you popping and you doing certain things because at the end of the day, we end up being our, our biggest enemies, our own worst enemies. We can't get to the next level in life because we have to unlearn a lot of our learned behaviors. Hating one another, doubting one another, not trusting one another. Those are learned behaviors that we have accumulated over the years through slavery, being enslaved, causing us not to work, work with each other, but against each other. That is not what we were built on. We were built on needing one another. And now there are systems in place that want you to be six feet from each other. You, you don't even want to embrace one another with a hug because you afraid, ah, something gonna jump off you and get you. I was talking to one of my partners the other day and she said to my, she said, you know, we are getting ready to walk in one of the scariest seasons because if now everything is equating to uh, COVID or, or getting the jab, then the common cold never really existed. Because if everything is going to be equated to that plague, because that's what this is. This is a plague. It's a genocide. It is an intentional killing of people who have to die. There are three billion people that they want to knock off. Okay? Three billion. And the first ethnicity that they don't mind knocking off is ours. The first ethnicity... They've been over in Africa testing all these years because they know that in certain African civilizations that they don't have uh, the technology, they don't have the communication, they don't have uh, the sustainability. And they go over there to these villages and they test our people and they put our people through these strenuous uh, changes by giving them uh, these little motions and uh, they, this little flowery eating substance and, and they put them on these little diets to see how their bodies are going to respond and, and they give them these certain medicines before they bring them over into the states to see how the responsiveness this is why they keep certain civilizations low and, and, and poor and impoverished because they can manipulate those particular communities why do you think that our communities look the way that they look it's not because we didn't have the money it's because there are certain people certain ethnicities certain tax brackets that don't want you and your little black family your little black son your little black daughter to be successful they want you to be just enough just enough so that you can participate in the economy but they don't want you to impact the economy the way that they do see they want us to be they want us to have just enough where we can be the buyers but they don't want us to have enough so that we can be the providers and the sellers yeah i want i want you i want you to be an athlete but i don't want you to open up a school yeah, I, I want you to be a comedian, but I don't want you to be an engineer. Yeah, I want you to be a hairstylist, but I don't want you to, to, to take over the hair industry. See, there's a difference between I want you to have something and I want you to have it all. This is why when you get around certain people, you want people that's going to compliment to where you want to go in life. OK, there are some people that want you to have a little bit of success, not as much as them, but just enough where you can feel satisfied with your life. There are some people that want you to, to look just a little bit cute, but not cuter than them because they don't want to have to feel some type of way. There are some people that want you to have just a little bit to survive, but not enough to survive and thrive. This is why you got to understand in your stretching season. Right. In your stretching season, you are going to have to be mindful. You are going to have to be mindful of who's stretching you and what's stretching you. And if it's not stretching you to be a better person, 
then you are going to have to withdraw. And I mean withdraw completely. This is the second week of January, year 2022. And we don't want to walk into the same eras, the same trials, the same tribulations that we had to face in 2021. But I'm going to tell you something. If you didn't pass it in 2021, you're going to run into that same test in 2022. That's how I usually go. You don't pass it. It comes right back. It's like it's like a school exam. You didn't pass it the first go around. It's going to come right on back to you until you can be able to matriculate into that next phase and season in your life. Listen, I love y'all. Make sure that y'all stay safe. Make sure you're washing your hands. Make sure you're washing, wearing your mask. Make sure you're getting sunlight, fresh air, clean water, eating your fruits and your vegetables, taking your vitamins, because that's what you're going to need in this season. You're going to be stretched in areas that you would not normally be paying attention to. Listen, I love y'all. You already know you're listening to Yeah, I Said It. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. Listen, make sure you follow me on Facebook. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Instagram. You already know Yeah, I Said It. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. And I know you heard me the first time. I love y'all. Peace.